A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. The missing treasures of our black kids. It is impossible to see it in one day. To see all of it, you need at least a week, and even then, without stopping even for a moment to admire the next work of art, the most famous museum in the world, the Louvre in Paris. In fact, this pyramid was built to cope with the endless stream of tourists, so there were more opportunities to admire the treasures of the Louvre. And since then, one must recognize that the number of tourists has increased several times что туристов, количество туристов увеличилось в несколько раз. But to see a rare manuscript is a rare event. It is possible only at temporary exhibitions. The museum's collection, 300,000 exhibits and only a small part, one-tenth is exhibited in the halls. Perhaps it is here in the Louvre, in the storerooms, there are hidden answers to one of the secrets of Kazakhstan, the secret of Ablakit's lost treasure. The library of Ablekit, this is also a special story, yes? Where is it? And manuscripts? Firstly, they were apparently lost. Well, of course, since then, everything was thrown away. The basis for the study of the Tibetology was the manuscripts of Ablekit. Chapter 1. The Mechanical Buddha. The weather is clear and it's a pleasure to shoot. Archaeologists had this perfect, safe and silent action. With the help of this laser, a tachyometer, scientists can take coordinates of the location of the monument, eastern Kazakhstan, the e medieval fortress monastery, Ablekit. Here, the Jungar Hosshauts had their winter dwellings. If in the winter period there were more pilgrims than in the summer period, of course, there were fewer pilgrims. The main object of pilgrimage was, of course, the temple. It was located on this platform. Near more, more modest residential and utility rooms, the entire territory of the Buddhist complex was surrounded by a powerful wall with a width of three and a half cubits and a length of two kilometers. Wait, what about this mountain? It itself is like a fortress, a natural barrier, and further on between the ridges, the masonry of bricks has been preserved to this day. The complex was built quickly from 1654 to 1657, a sort of symbol of the stronghold of the Jungarian Empire, which in every possible way strove to gain a foothold in these lands. But it did not even stand for two decades. Local squabbles forced the founder of the temple, Ablai Taishi, to leave these places. Its uniqueness lies in the fact that it has a good preservation and has a wide popularity in history. A lot of sources are left, such as drawings. And what is surprising, the fortress itself was left almost untouched. Everyone left, but it was such a convenient place for defense, for a garrison, although everything, nature itself, favored the place. But it is unclear why the temple was abandoned and the fortress itself. Strange, why did they take off and leave everything, the sacred books and sacred scrolls? It's hard to say what kind of relationship they had, on what terms did they give up this monastery, fortress and temple. But in people's written records, a lot of data about the treasures of this temple complex were left behind, about the gold and even the mechanical Buddha, which were hidden in a secret place. There's a big foot between the supports, which occupied the main idol. It is represented as a bow in the hands. It would be like secret cords, so it was arranged that when the door of the temple is opened, it seems as if he's pulling a bow. Many of these are confirmed for sure. And Peter Palace, traveling to different places of the Russian state. About the library, Palace and other travelers also write a lot. But how did valuable manuscripts disappear is another mystery. Chapter 2 
disappeared manuscripts. Read only from us the mysterious finds in the Altai, the secret writings of the ancient people. The Parisians, distributed at the first in the usual format French newspaper, actually it was called La Gazette in the year 1721. And now various objects are found in the graves and in the caves. Some belong to religious cults, others are ornaments, tools or weapons, namely axes, knives, rings, figures of people and animals of bronze or silver of various finishes, as seen from drawings made from the originals, from an article in La Gazette. The French newspaper talked about artifacts found in Ablekit and its environs. A year earlier, Major Likharev brought Peter the Great a whole collection of bronze figurines. The Russian sovereign was very pleased with the finds, despite the fact that the main goal of the expedition, the search for sandy gold, was not successful. In 1720, Likarov comes here to a place where the Uskomenogorsk fortress is based. It turns out to be the Irtysh military line. And in the monastery, they find manuscripts. The library was here. The statues were, of course. Most of it was taken out and then transferred to St. Petersburg. Ablekit figurines stood in the royal office, which is interesting because they became the basis for the collection of the curiosities. Actually, the Kunstkamera itself began with them. As for the mysterious manuscripts, nobody could decipher them in St. Petersburg. Therefore, they were sent on to Europe, together with sketches of the statuettes. St. Petersburg began to look for a man who could read these manuscripts. The story also became legendary. The Academy of Inscriptions and Elegant Literature, Paris, and a heated debate. After all, in the hands of scientists were the first samples of literature and unknown science. The opinions of the French academics were divided. Were they Uyghur or Tibetan manuscripts? For the first time, Europe learned about Tibetan manuscripts. There was one Frenchman who said, I'll read, uh, allegedly. In short, he deceived everyone. In fact, he did not read anything. Then, over time, he was exposed. A counterfeit was discovered by the author of the history of Siberia, Miller, who proved that the translations being written were arbitrary. And in 1734, the next expedition, the academic expedition, led by Gerhard Miller and Johann Gmelin, the largest scientist of the time, set off for the Altai. What is interesting, the temple itself preserved the manuscripts, a huge number of them. At the wall, there was a cupboard of a considerable size in which the sacred assembly of Tangut and Mongolian manuscripts was stored. However, it happened that the manuscripts were scattered all over the room and at any rate were heavily ransacked by soldiers and hunters. Gerhard Miller from the documents of the academic expedition. Moreover, the scientist lamented Invaluable manuscripts were used to wrap the goods. Just they stitched the windows. Thanks to the expedition, it was possible to have a considerable part, but the citation remains that they could be hardly taken away on 10 horses. And then some of the handwritten manuscripts were left in the Academy of Sciences. It is believed of both Kazakhstan and Russia. But it's probably not quite what Miller's description was about. It should be noted that the scientists did not visit the temple itself. They sent a small detachment to take books from Ablakit. Miller didn't say anything about the number of exported manuscripts, just mentioned a significant word, most often mentioned a number, one and a half thousand sheets or works. At that time, about seven wagons of birch bark manuscripts were taken out, and we still find the remains. It's believed that most of the finds were delivered to St. Petersburg by Likharov, Miller and Gmelin. None of them mentioned in the documents objects from precious metals, but according to rumors, the founder of Uskomenogorsk, Major Likharov, found in Ablekit a treasure on a gold bed weighing 16 pounds.
Chapter 3 The Gold of the Monastery Did you find the treasure? There is no treasure. Perhaps garbage with wheelbarrows or nuts or screws. And not even a single grain of sand is gold. There is hardly anything interesting here. The scientist checks the readings of his device. Archaeologists have already worked on this material. They, of course, also heard from local residents and in the sources about the legendary gold of Ablekhit. It's difficult to say. Some silver, some gold statuettes, something was there, but apparently they were taken. According to folk legends, the temple was decorated with a golden statue of Buddha the size of a man. It's believed that it was drowned in a lake or hid in the surrounding caves. Even the name of one of them is mentioned. After all, what is a bao? It's a lace, a crucis, a wasteland. It's obvious that they were talking about a cave. Before entering it, one must pass through some sort of trails, or indeed a bow. A bow can be translated as a knot. This small lake is already explored in, and through, they say, the water in it was the clean before the exodus of the Zhongar, and after that it became bitter, allegedly all because of the treasure hidden there. There was even a case recorded by one of the representatives of the Geographical Society, Niki Ting. He came for the treasure of a descendant of one of the generals, Ablai Taishi. When the Chinese arrived in Ablai Kids in 1821, and then in 1824, he too was looking for the gold of his ancestor, and he came with a specific map. He asked for help from the locals. He said, the wealth beneath the walls of the fortress is buried. But the quote, could not understand one condition written in the document which can help to find the treasure. To dissemble the whole wall, a visitor, of course, did not dare and left with nothing. Almost 60 years have passed since they discovered these ruins. According to the stories that the Cossacks heard from their fathers, they hoped to find hidden treasures here, but found only a few parchments, so heavy that they could not open them, and sent them to St. Petersburg. I do not know if they could read them and what became of them. Alexander Benkendorf, Memoirs. The treasure that Likhara's expedition found was not yet documented. Perhaps the treasure of Ablaikit will be found by archaeologists. Excavations are still going on. But the tracks of the library must be looked for in quite a different place or even places. Epilogue. Manuscripts do not burn. There are so many strange things in the history of Ablaikit's finds that researchers cannot understand even now. It's well known that the Ablaikit figurines that adorned the cabinet of Peter the Great after the death of the king were taken to the Kunstkammer. But the whole collection was ruined during the fire of 1747. It was unlikely the manuscripts got there except for single copies and they should have been preserved. In France, they are now in the Louvre. Most likely, these are manuscripts sent by Peter the Great for decoding, and the next expedition to Ablekit also found documents valuable to world history. Some manuscripts were bought from local residents, and again they were found in Paris and other European cities. Entire libraries were discovered under the ruins of Ablekit and in the colossal ruins that stretch along the banks of the Irtish River. Thousands of manuscripts in unknown languages and a lot of manuscripts written in Chinese, Kalmyk, and Manchu. They decay in the desert sections of the academy. Charles Masson, Secret Notes on Russia. This data of the late 18th century, modern scientists have checked repeatedly, and it is reliably known that only a small part of the collection has been preserved in the academy. So the search for them is not over yet.